Welcome to the weekend edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that for over 50 years has been changing lives through God's unconditional love and grace. I believe that God is more pleased with you when you take a step of faith and then fall flat of your face. I believe God says, that's my boy or that's my girl, because at least you stepped out and believed God. And now, here's Andrew. I want to turn back over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I was in this earlier in the week. I've been talking about how to hear the voice of God. And of course, there's a lot more to say in just a short, this is the last session, so we're just going to be scratching the surface on some of these things. But I was over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is the Apostle Paul speaking, and he said in verse... For, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Man, that is so important. It, what you're preaching, if it's the true word of God, there needs to be some evidence of it. There needs to be physical proof. There needs to be results. And that's one of the things that, uh, you know, we see happen here. We see people come in every time, every year in wheelchairs, all kinds of things, and then they leave differently. And uh, we see physical proof of the power of God touching and transforming people's lives. And that's just awesome. And he says the reason that for that is that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. So in other words, it shouldn't be that you are persuaded just uh, intellectually, emotionally, won over, by charisma, personality, or anything like that, but it needs to be the Spirit of God, the wisdom of God that is changing people's lives. And then in verse 6, it says, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. And if you put this together, I'm not going to turn back there, but just in the previous page over here, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he says that the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. I tell you, we glorify people because of these worldly accomplishments and stuff, but this is really important. It says that the wisdom of this world comes to nothing. And it says in verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom uh, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. And you know, the word mystery, mean, it's talking about something that's hidden. It's not hidden from us, it's hidden for us, but it's hidden from people that are operating in the world's wisdom. You know what Billy was saying about giving when we receive an offering? The world thinks that the way to increase is to hoard and to keep. And to give something away is just completely contrary to the wisdom of the world. But when you, once you tap into the wisdom of God, man, I guarantee you, you are never going to prosper if you don't become a rabid, fanatical, committed giver. Giving is a huge part of God's prosperity, but it is just totally contrary to this world system. And if you are still living under that mindset, it's going to hinder your prosperity, because I can guarantee you, you are not going to prosper if you don't learn to take a portion of what you've got and sow it. So it's a mystery, but it's not a mystery if you are uh, thinking the way that the Word teaches. It's just contrary to the way the, the um, world thinks. And what I wanted to focus on here in this seventh verse, it says, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now, keep your finger there because I'm going to come back, but look over in chapter 14. And in chapters 12 through 14, Paul is talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and he's giving them instructions because these people, uh, they were operating in the gifts to an excess. They actually would come together, and every single person would just speak in tongues without an interpretation. And he began to give them some guidelines about how you have to uh, control this, how it should be done properly. So that starts in chapter 12, goes all the way into chapter 14. And in chapter 14 and in verse 1, it says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. 
For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. This tells you what you're doing when you're speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues, you are speaking the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. Now look back in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and in verse 6, howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world, but that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So this is the same writer, the Apostle Paul, speaking to the same group of people. It's men that put the chapter and verse divisions in there so that we could reference things. But this is the same context, and here he is just a few pages later saying that when you are speaking in tongues, you are speaking forth uh, the wisdom of God in a mystery. So let me say this. You know how Paul got his revelation? Of course, he had the foundation of the Word of God. He was raised a Pharisee of the Pharisee. He grew up in Jerusalem under the influence of Gamal, the number one rabbi of his day. He had the Word in him, but it wasn't profiting him until he had this encounter with the Lord. And then the, he spent three and a half years in the desert. And I'm not saying the only thing he did was submit to the Holy Spirit and pray in tongues, but it's one of the big things he did. He said right here that when you are speaking in tongues, you are speaking the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. And this is what he taught. He taught the wisdom of God in a mystery. And one of the ways that he got this revelation that was so strong that even the apostle Peter in his writing says, our beloved brother Paul says some things that are hard to be understood, that those that are unlearned and unstable wrestle with as they do the other scriptures. The revelation that God gave Paul about the grace of God was greater than the revelation that Peter had who lived with Jesus for three and a half years and walked with him. Paul had a revelation on the grace of God. All of the Pauline epistles are what the church is based upon. And Paul had this revelation of the grace of God that was just tremendous. It's changed all of our lives. How did he get it? Well, by his own admission right here, did you know when you are speaking in tongues, you are speaking the hidden wisdom of God? It is not just gibberish. You may not know what you're saying, but it's, it's, you're speaking the hidden wisdom of God. And so look at some scriptures here, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And in verse 14, he says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. And if you were here and heard me say these things, if you can retain what I was saying, I was talking about that you have the mind of Christ. We don't need a word from God that comes from the outside. Now, again, God loves us so much that if that's where you are, God will reach you through a prophecy or you could hear something through somebody else. And so God is gracious and he'll meet us where our faith is. But I'm telling you, he's trying. You've got the mind of Christ. And if you could just draw on what is already on the inside of you, you don't need any man to teach you. But that same anointing will teach you all things. So we're trying to get to where we're listening to our spirit. It's our spirit that has the mind of Christ in it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. And when you pray in an unknown tongue, it's your spirit praying, the part of you that has the mind of Christ. Anytime you need a word from God, direction from God, discernment, anything, your spirit knows. You know everything. 1 John 2, 20, you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Not some things, all things. All things. Your born again spirit knows exactly, should I do this or should I do that? Should I listen to this person? Should I follow this person? Is this the path that I need to take? Your spirit knows all of that stuff. You don't have a lack of knowledge. The problem is we aren't walking in the spirit. We're walking in the flesh. We are being controlled by the way we've been taught and brought up the way our society thinks, more of, most of us are plugged into the world and spend more time listening to the news or reading the blogs or watching television or reading books than we do reading the Bible. 
And so the problem isn't that we don't know. You know all things. Your spirit knows everything, but you got to get it out here to where you can process it and learn it and operate in it. How do you do that? When you pray in tongues, your spirit is praying. The part of you that has the mind of Christ and that knows all things. So back up one verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 13. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. If your spirit has the mind of Christ, if you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things, and when you pray in tongues, you are speaking the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. That's what Paul said he was preaching from. That's where he got his revelation from. If all of these things are true, how do you draw it out? It's like having a well and you got this life-giving water down there, but it, you could die of thirst leaning against the well if you can't draw that water out. How do you get this wisdom of God out of you? You pray in tongues and you ask for an interpretation. Now, this is primarily talking about how the, the gift of tongues is supposed to operate in a church assembly, that if you pray in tongues, you have to have an interpretation or you need to be quiet. And then there can't be more than two or three messages in tongues in one meeting. But in this same passage of scripture right here, the apostle Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. So when Paul said that I speak in tongues more than y'all, but not in the church, he's all of these things he's telling you about how you operate in these gifts in the church. But by saying this, he showed you that he spoke in tongues outside of the church. It wasn't just in a church assembly. And then he spoke in tongues and gave an interpreter interpretation. He spoke in tongues more than all of them, more than you all talking about more than the entire body here in Corinth, more than all of them put together. He spoke in tongues more than them all. And it just so happened that this man turned the world right side up, that he wrote half of the New Testament books, that here we are 2000 years later talking about him because he spoke in tongues. I'm telling you, when you start talking about hearing the voice of God, one of the most important things you can do is speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is just like flipping a switch on the Holy Spirit. It just starts the dynamo. It starts the power of God flowing. It is really important. And I'm amazed how many people have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and yet will go through a whole day and not speak in tongues. Go through a week. And I'm not asking you to raise your hand on this, but there are people in here that it's been a week since you've spoken in tongues, a month since you've spoken in tongues. There may be some of you that go months, plural, without speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is one of the most important things you can do to hear the voice of God. Because when you speak in tongues, it is your spirit praying that has the mind of Christ that knows all things. You are speaking out the hidden wisdom of God out of your mouth. And all you have to do is ask for an interpretation. Now, when you're in a church assembly, you have to have an interpretation in English. You, the person who's speaking in tongues has to stop and then another person has to interpret it. But when you're by yourself, it just says that when you speak in unknown tongues, your understanding is unfruitful. All you need for an interpretation when you're by yourself, you don't have to stop and then interpret something in English, you just need to understand. That's all you're after is just understanding. And the way it works with me is I pray in tongues a lot and I walk and I pray in tongues and I'm just asking God to give me wisdom. And sometimes he'll tell me things just exactly like what Greg was teaching today. He was ministering to this to me just a week or two ago about man, how I need to be rejoicing. And that's the interpretation. It's what's the, it's the mind of Christ. And he's just reminded me and talking about rejoicing. He's talking about, you know, I, when Lawson spoke this week about the authority of the believer, man, I've been praying in tongues over that the last few days as I've been walking around that I need to start using the, the authority. I use it, but you know, you, you never just get everything ironed out. Amen. It's all a process. 
And uh, the Lord was reminding me. And when I pray in tongues, this is what happened. I just say, Father, I'm going to pray in tongues. And I believe that my understanding becomes fruitful. And all of a sudden, he'll start showing me things. And I'll start seeing things. And he'll bring things back to my remembrance. And he will just speak things to me. He shows me all kinds of things. I got so many examples on this. You know, back when I first got uh, turned on to the Lord, I heard Kenneth Copeland say, you ought to pray in tongues an hour a day. And I thought if an hour a day was good, two, three, four hours a day, it'd be awesome. So I started praying in tongues three and four hours a day. This is back before I was married. And I would just pray in tongues three or four hours a day. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I just figured Kenneth Copeland was having more success than I was. And so that was a good thing to do. So I would pray in tongues. And without me even knowing what was happening, as you know, when you're praying in tongues, I don't know how many of you have ever prayed in tongues for a prolonged period of time. Most people, it's like a phrase or it's a, or for, you know, five seconds. It's kind of like when you get, uh, you know, steam going on the inside of something and you need to get a little bit of steam off. You just speak in tongues because you feel blessed all of a sudden or something. But if you start praying in tongues over a prolonged period of time, you got to do something with your mind. Because the Bible says it's your spirit praying. Your mind isn't praying. I don't know if you've ever checked this out, but you know what? I can read scripture and be speaking in tongues the whole time I'm reading and have perfect comprehension. Matter of fact, I'll get better comprehension because I'm allowing the spirit within me to help me. But you can't read the Bible and quote Mary had a little lamb at the same time. You can't do it because that's coming out of your brain. But when you speak in tongues, it's coming out of your spirit and your mind has to do something. So your mind is going to be focused on something. And this is the reason most people can't pray in tongues a long period of time is because they can't keep their mind focused on the things of God. Most people are completely con controlled by carnal thoughts, feelings, emotions, what people are saying, what your financial situation is, and stuff like this. This is another benefit of praying in tongues. If you pray in tongues for a long time, you are going to have to focus on God. You have to focus on God. If your mind wanders, you'll quit speaking in tongues. And I read these verses earlier, Romans chapter 8, to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The carnal, those that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can tell if you're in the flesh because those that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh. Your mind is controlled and dominated by physical, natural things. So when you pray in tongues, it forces you to focus upon God. And like I said, you got to do something with your mind. So here's the way I do it. I'm not saying it has to be this way for everybody, but this is the way I do it. When I'm praying in tongues, I'm praying with my understanding at the same time. I'm thinking about God and I'm constantly in communion with God and I'm praying with my mind the same time that I'm praying in tongues. And so when I first started doing this and I was doing it for hours at a time, Without even knowing about it, I just all of a sudden I'd be praying in tongues, but then somebody would come to my mind that I hadn't thought of in years. I'd start thinking about people. I'd start praying for people and interceding and asking God to bless them. And without me realizing it, I hadn't seen these people in years, but within a day or so, these people would just show up in my path and they'd have a need. And all of a sudden I'd know how to minister to them. And at first I didn't pick it up, but you know, my lightning fast mind after a while began to figure out that I was praying in tongues for that person. And that's the reason that they came to my mind. I remember this one man that I hadn't seen in four years. I'd come out of the Baptist church and he was a friend of mine in the Baptist church. I hadn't seen him in four years and I was praying one morning and all of a sudden this guy just came to my mind and I started praying for him. And I bet you I spent two hours praying for this guy in my mind while I was praying in tongues. And while I was praying, the doorbell rang. I went to the door and there was this guy that I hadn't seen in four years. And he walked in and sat, I mean, he didn't even say hi. He didn't even say, hey, I hadn't seen you in four years or nothing. He just walked in, he was burdened and he sat down and just started crying and saying, man, my life is in a mess, I need help. And I just stopped him. And this is back 
when operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit was brand new to me. This was strange to the max. But I just stopped him in the middle and I said, here's what's happened to you. And I read this guy's mail and he was a Baptist and he didn't hadn't seen me since I got filled with the Holy Spirit. He didn't know what was going on, but he knew it was God because I read this guy's mail and told him everything. And I just cut a two or three hour counseling session down to 10 minutes, told him what was wrong and dealt with it. And boom, it was over. And you know how that happened? Because I, while I was praying in tongues, my spirit was praying and God was giving me an interpretation. So I didn't pray in tongues and then stop and interpret in English. I just was praying in tongues and it, my understanding became fruitful. I began to understand what I was doing. And I do this constantly. I pray in tongues many times, hours a day. I can't do it like I don't do it during this conference. I probably hadn't prayed in tongues hours a day, but I guarantee you I pray in tongues every day during this conference. I walk around and I pray in tongues. I pray in tongues a lot. And it, it draws out the mind of Christ. It helps you to hear the voice of God. God will just start inspiring you and showing you things. Learn how to recognize when God is speaking to you by getting Andrew's complete teaching titled, How to Hear God's Voice. Once again, I'd like to encourage you to get this either CD or DVD set that was taken from our television programs on how to hear God's voice. This is absolutely essential. You are not gonna go very far in your relationship with the Lord or in succeeding in the things He calls you to do if you can't clearly hear His voice. And the good news is you don't have to go without it. God wants to speak to you, so please get this series on how to hear God's voice. Andrew's complete teaching, How to Hear God's Voice, is available as a CD or DVD album for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-735-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. You know, when we were down in Colorado Springs and we had this um, building that we moved into, it was a 110,000 square foot building and we moved from a 14,600 square foot building. So it was a huge step. I mean, it was big and it cost $3.2 million to buy that building. And I took out a loan for that. And then we were gonna cost $3.2 million to refurbish it and to build it out. It was a factory and it was totally gutted on the inside except for 10,000 square feet in the front. And so we started this process and the bank told me that they would give us a construction loan when we bought the building. And it was gonna be a $3.2 million construction loan. And uh, for nine months after I bought this building, they didn't give us the money. They kept saying, well, next week, we got a little bit more to do. And it just kept dragging on. And I spent as much money as I had. We dug up the floor, we put in, we dug where the plumbing would go, we gutted some stuff. So we did a few things, but I didn't have enough money to build the thing out. And this big old warehouse was just sitting there vacant for nine months. And it was a real disappointment. I had to deal with that. And uh, anyway, there's multiple reasons everything was going on. I'm giving you the short version. But finally, after nine months, I was sitting with the banker and it was a, it was a Christian banker. It was an evangelical credit union and stuff. And they, they said, oh, we are for you and we wanna help you. And after nine months, we were sitting at the table and he says, you know, it's been nine months since we had this building appraised. We need to get an appraisal and just start the whole process over again. And when he said that, man, I said, no way, no way am I going to start over and then nine months down the road still have nothing. 
And so I just told him, I said, look, let me pray about this. I should have been praying about this all along. But anyway, I decided I'm going to pray about this. And so I started praying, but then I went home and I've built a trail on my property that's 2.6 miles round trip. And I walk and I pray on that property and I started praying and I specifically took these verses. I said, Father, this is not your will. I know that my spirit man has an answer. There is a way through this. I just need to get it out of my spirit and up here so that I can understand it and act on it. And I said, I'm going to pray in tongues. And when I pray in tongues, my spirit that has the mind of Christ and knows all things has that answer. I'm going to pray in tongues and then I'm going to pray that I interpret. And I said, I believe I'm getting an interpretation about what I need to do. So I started walking and I've got this rock that's probably maybe twice as far as from here to the back of this auditorium. And it's a rock that's got a sheer flat face on it. And I've painted it and written on it and says, if you don't, I will. You know, about if you, if you don't praise God, the rocks will cry out. So every time I walk by this rock, it's written on there and it says, if you don't, I will. And I go, praise the Lord. Amen. And, but anyway, it was only about twice as far as from here to the back of this room. And I started praying in tongues and asked for an interpretation. And by the time I got to that rock, God brought back to my remembrance a prophecy that was two years before that was talking about all of this expansion that God was telling me to do. And he says, and the good news is you aren't going to have to take out a loan because you have a bank. And when they said that, I thought, what bank do I have? I know Charlie and Jill were there. They heard this prophecy by Dave Duell. And he says, your partners are your bank. Your partners are going to finance everything that God tells you to do. And I, I praised God when I got it. But honestly, you get busy and I just forgot about it. And I had borrowed $3.2 million to get that building. And I was trying to get the $3.2 million construction loan and it wasn't working. And I asked for an interpretation, what's wrong? And immediately a prophecy I hadn't thought of in two years came back to my remembrance. And it was just so obvious that this was the problem. He didn't want me to go in debt. He didn't want me to take out a loan. And did you know, that was such a big deal because at that time, the way we had been saving money, I went back to the house and figured it up with the amount of money that we had saved for me to come up with $3.2 million at the rate we had saved money. I figured out I'd be over 120 years old by the time we got it. And I mean, this was for our Bible college and our Bible college was literally just strapped. We could not expand. We couldn't take one more person. We actually, at the facility we were in, we put porta potties outside in the Colorado weather and the men had to all go use porta potties outside. And we turned all of the indoor toilets into the women's toilets. And I mean, you couldn't put another person in that building. We were, we were dying because we couldn't accommodate the people. We had to have this facility. And for me to wait until I was 120 years old to come up with cash on this, it was, this was either going to be a great word from God or the most foolish thing I'd ever done. And you know, the Bible says, I believe it's Psalms 15, 4, that a godly man will swear to his own hurt and not change. And so if I was going to all of a sudden say that this is what God told me and this is what I'm supposed to do, it wasn't, I wasn't going to try it. I mean, if, if I was going to say God told me not to go in debt for this building, well, then I wasn't going to go in debt regardless. And so I prayed about it and checked it out and did all the other things that I've been teaching this week about let the peace of God rule in your heart. And I considered the options and I didn't have 100% peace. I didn't think it was a good thing for me to wait until I was 120 something years old before all the money came in. But when I thought about uh, not taking out a loan, I just was excited like, this is God. This is gonna be the greatest miracle we've ever seen. I had total joy, total peace over it. And uh, so anyway, I decided to do it. And I went in and told our manager, I said, if they come back, tomorrow and give me the money that we've been asking for. I said, I'm not taking it. We're going to do this debt free. Sure enough, 
the next day, a different bank that we had applied to said, you need $4 million. We've approved you, sign this, and you get $4 million. And I said, you're a day too late. I said, we aren't taking out a loan. And we turned them down. And did you know in 14 months, we had that $3.2 million and it moved into that in 14 months. It was the greatest miracle we'd ever seen. And all of that happened by, I had the mind of Christ. I just wasn't using it. I was using my own mind. I was doing things just the natural way. This is the way everybody else does it. You go take out a loan. We qualify it. And so let's just go the natural route. But that wasn't what God wanted me to do. I believe it was actually the Lord that hindered us from getting the construction loan. And so I prayed in tongues and God gave me revelation. And every building, the, everything you see in here, this, I've prayed in tongues over this. Did you know when we were building this thing, they put scaffolding up to the roof and you could walk on that scaffold. I had to duck to go under all of those things. And I've walked over every inch of this building, every inch of this property. I've walked and I pray and I've prayed in tongues thousands of hours over this property and over these buildings. I walk usually between two to four miles a day in these buildings. And I pray over them. And I'm praying in tongues. And God just shows me things. And that's the way all of this came to pass. I know some of you think this is weird, but I think you're weird. <laughs> to have the mind of Christ. And when you pray in tongues, it's your spirit praying. It's the mind of Christ praying. And all you got to do is just say, God, what am I praying about? What do you want me to do? What is your will for me? And all of a sudden, you just start having thoughts that you've forgotten for two years. All of a sudden, you start getting inspired. You think about people that you haven't thought about. All of a sudden, instead of fear and discouragement, it changes and you all of a sudden start seeing things in a different light and you get encouraged instead of discouraged. Why in the world, if we have this, aren't we using it? I minister to ministers all of the time. We have a minister's conference coming up the first week of October. And I remember a number of years back just ministering on the baptism of the Holy Spirit to a group of preachers that were all baptized in the Holy Spirit. And yet, did you know, it changed many of their lives because there was people who were baptized in the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues 20 years ago and hadn't spoken tongues a day since. Why in the world, if we have the power of the Holy Spirit, aren't we using it? Again, I say, when you start praying in tongues, if you do more than just let out a little phrase and for five seconds pray in tongues, if you pray in tongues over a prolonged period of time, I guarantee you, it forces you to get into the spirit. It forces you to take your mind off of the natural. It forces you to quit being dominated by depression and discouragement. You cannot pray in tongues and be carnal in your thinking at the same time. Pray, and I'm talking about ex extended periods of time. If you pray in tongues for an extended period of time, your mind is going to have to focus on God or you won't be able to pray in tongues. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you're thinking on things of the flesh, well, then you will default to the flesh. Speaking in tongues over a prolonged period of time will force you to put your mind upon God. It's powerful. It is awesome. I tell you, you need to be praying in tongues a lot and specifically asking God for an interpretation. And you don't have to stop and interpret in English. All you need is just to start getting your understanding fruitful. You just start, all of a sudden, you start understanding things. God starts controlling your thinking. Man, that's awesome. We're talking about hearing the voice of God and there's much, much more to it than what I've shared. But just the few little things I've shared about recognizing you have the mind of Christ, that if you will delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart and you can follow those desires. You can let the peace of God rule in your heart and you can pray in tongues and ask God for an interpretation and He will just supernaturally begin to start uh, you know, directing your thoughts in His ways and things will happen. 
When I have to make a decision, this is always what I'll do. I'll always ask for some time. Say, give me some time to pray about it. And then I'll go walking and I'll pray about it. And I'll pray and it usually doesn't take very long. Let me also say this as a last bit of instruction. If you don't pray in tongues at lengthy periods of time, it's going to be hard for you to do this at first. It's like a muscle. If you haven't exercised that muscle, you aren't going to be able to lift a thousand pounds. You're going to have to build up to it. And there's some of you that have never prayed in tongues more than just a, maybe one sentence or a phrase or something like that. It's going to be like if you try and prayed in tongues for 20 minutes, it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your life because you have never put your mind stayed upon God 20 minutes in succession in your life. And it's like that muscle, it just isn't ready. And so you start where you are and you, you do what you can do. But ultimately, you ought to be building it up to where you just pray in tongues all the time. Man, when you're driving someplace, why sit there and listen to the, all the bad news that's on the radio or something? Man, that's a great time to be praying in tongues, especially when somebody cuts you off in traffic. <laughs> Instead of getting mad and waving at them with one finger, you could pray in tongues, praise God. And it just changes the way you react in traffic. You know, I only have a 30 minute drive now to come in here. I used to have an hour drive when our offices were down in Colorado Springs, but I never regretted it. I never uh, begrudged that time because man, I would pray in tongues the entire time. And now that we've moved up here, some of my employees who live down in the Springs, they have 45 minutes to an hour's drive. And I was talking to one of them not long ago and they said, man, they love it. It is awesome. This is when they pray. This is when they listen to praise music and stuff like that. I tell you what, you can, you could take your driving time. You could turn off uh, some of the stuff that you watch as the stomach turns on television and you could pray in tongues and you could study the word. And it is, it would be phenomenal. And many of you, it wouldn't be that all of a sudden there's just, you know, some overwhelming presence and then you stop and speak out an interpretation in English. It's not like that. But just all of a sudden, your heart would change. Your values would change. You'd start being excited about the things of God and instead of being excited about seeing some of the weird stuff that we do. It would change your desires. It would change everything. You have the mind of Christ. And you know all things. It's just a matter of getting it out. And there's much more than what we've shared. I've emphasized and talked around about the Word of God in every one of these things. But I'm telling you, you need to spend huge amounts of time studying the Word of God. This is the mind of Christ written down on, on paper. And you need to know this and compare everything that you think is God's leadership to this put it up against it. They are perfect. They compare perfectly and they'll never violate each other. And if you don't know this, then you better get next to somebody who does know this and let them help you until you get mature in the Word of God. Or you could come to Karis Bible College and we will teach you. <laughs> Praise God. How many of you feel like God told you to come to the Karis Bible College this week? Anybody? And that's quite a few people. Praise the Lord. All right, so how many of you have actually signed up this week? That's less. You know what this means is that some of you, God has spoken to you. You admitted it. You raised your hand and you hadn't acted on it yet. Faith without works is dead. You need to go sign up before you leave this place. And I know some people say, well, you're kind of forcing people. Here's what I've learned is that when you're in a situation like this, did you know what we have mechanically made you withdraw from the carnal stuff that deadens you to the voice of God. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And sad to say, most Christians live in the flesh and it is just not pleasing to God and they can't hear the voice of God. So you come to a conference where for four or five hours a day, you are just sitting under the word. You're visiting with people who are talking about the Lord and it makes you sensitive to God. 
and you hear God and God speaks to you in ways that you don't typically hear. But then, sad to say, most people will go home and put themselves back in the same lifestyle that made you so dead and insensitive to God in the first place. You will go back to the same routine and then uh, you'll say, well, I'm not so sure about what I felt at that conference. I believe that what you've heard here under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is God speaking to you and I'm not making any apologies. You need to strike while you're sensitive to God. You need to, you need to sign up and get registered and commit yourself. Put your money down. Faith without works is dead. Do something. Obligate yourself to it. Once I know that God has spoken to me, I will do something that commits myself to it. You know, God spoke to me. Um, anyway, I don't want to give you the details about this because I don't, I'm not, anyway, God spoke something to me a week ago today. And uh, I know it was God that was speaking to me. But you know what? It would have been easy for me to just kind of let it go and see how it happened. But instead, I said, nope, I need to do something. I need to act on this. So I went to my assistant and I told her, I said, here's what I'm going to do. And I need this thing. And I had her go order something. It came in last Wednesday. And I, all of this is before I, any of it had happened, but I just knew it was going to happen. And so I started taking steps and talking about it. And sure enough, we did it yesterday and it happened. And it I had to take steps. I could have just sat on this thing and it would have, I would have missed it. You've got to act on what God is showing you. If you feel like God has spoken to you, don't leave this place without acting on it. And again, it doesn't have to be just Bible college. If he gave you instructions about something else, commit yourself, get out on a limb, do something, obligate yourself. And many people are afraid to do that because what if I missed it? Well, you missed it. Amen. It's not, it's not the end of the world to miss it. I believe that God is more pleased with you when you take a step of faith and then fall flat of your face. I believe God says, that's my boy or that's my girl because at least you stepped out and believed God. But most people are so afraid of making a mistake that they won't do anything. And that's the biggest mistake of all. The reason I do what I do is twofold. First of all, God just transformed my life. And it's just like the guy that the Lord told him, he says, don't go tell anybody about what's happened to your daughter. And he, man, couldn't keep it quiet. When you get God touching you, you just want to tell somebody. You got this good news you want to tell people. But beyond that, I believe God's got a specific call on my life. And I mean, God has encouraged me thousands of times. And on November the 4th, 2014, he woke me up at three o'clock in the morning and he said, this is the reason that I've raised you up is to change people's opinion of me. And as their opinion of me changes, then they in turn will go change their world. Our partners are essential to everything we do. 53% of the people who write us and contact us don't give a thing, and we send them the material. And the reason that I give my tapes away is because back in the beginning of our ministry when we were in Seagoville, Texas, pastoring our first little church, I just made a promise. I said, God, if you ever show me something that could change another person's life, I'll never deny them access to it because of finances. The initial response that I get from people who come in contact with our ministry is that they just see God in a total different light than they've ever seen Him. That causes them to respond to God. The whole motive behind Charis is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, where Paul said, Be strong in the grace that's in the Lord Jesus, and the things that you have heard of me among many Witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. That's been my whole thrust. And when I started Caris Bible College, it was because I could see that it was a way of fulfilling those verses. Through Caris, we go deeper with people than I can do on television or through a book or through a CD or anything like that. And so what we hope to accomplish is to make disciples. And it's already happening. We've got people on every continent of the world that are reaching people. And through them, 
We are making an impact that I could never do. Thank you for watching the weekend edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. We hope you've been blessed by today's teaching. You can get the products on today's teaching as well as many other valuable resources when you visit our website at awmi.net. For over 20 years, Karis Bible College has been training and empowering students to know who they are in Christ and step into their God-given calling and purpose. Not only do we have our main campus in Woodland Park, Colorado, we also have extension schools in several locations all around the world. You can also participate in Karis Online through our distance education courses. If you're interested in attending Karis Bible College, visit karisbiblecollege.org to find a campus near you to discover all the ways you can attend Karis Bible College. If you're unable to attend Karis Bible College at one of these locations, we encourage you to consider enrolling in eCharis. eCharis has the entire first-year curriculum preloaded onto an iPad. You can watch over 312 hours of teaching from Karis Bible College instructors anywhere at any time. No internet connection is required. To learn more about becoming a student through eCharis, contact us today. I want to thank you for watching our weekend program of the Gospel Truth and let you know that we have a ministry that I'm on television five days a week. I've been doing that for over 20 years. We have offices, 19 offices around the world. We have Bible colleges located all around the world and just a lot of things that God is doing through this ministry. We would love for you to be a part of it. I encourage you to go check it out at awmi.net and you can join with us and become a partner today. Andrew Womack Ministries has several offices in Karis Bible College locations around the world. To find a location near you, visit our website at awmi.net and click Contact Us. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Through Andrew Womack Ministries, countless destinies have been changed. Bodies have been healed, marriages restored, and minds transformed around the world. What has made a difference in so many lives started, though, with one ordinary 12-year-old who asked God to show him his will for his life at his father's funeral. This is the destiny story of Andrew Womack. I was sitting on the front row and this is when they had an open casket and I was sitting there looking at the, my dad's body and listening to that song, How Great Thou Art. And I just thought, this is weird. I was told that God's the one that killed my dad when I was 12 years old, that God punished us, that God put sickness on us. He, he was, you know, extremely hard to please. And if you didn't measure up, boy, you could expect the wrath of God. And I remember at that funeral praying and saying, God, if you're truly great, reveal yourself to me. Show me what you want to do with my life. God did exactly that. On March 23, 1968, God revealed himself to 18-year-old Andrew, freeing him from his religious mindset that was based on his own performance. I was just laying on the floor in a puddle of tears, and instead of God's wrath coming on me, I just had a supernatural, a tangible love come on me that uh, overwhelmed me. Because of that experience that God's goodness to me and love for me has nothing to do with how good I am. It just transformed me. From the beginning, I just knew it was going to touch the world.
I got drafted and sent to Vietnam. And I was put out on a fire support base. But did you know I was a chaplain's assistant assigned there and my chaplain was gone. And so I actually didn't have anybody over me. I didn't have anything to do. And I sat there for 13 months spending anywhere from 10 to 15 hours a day just studying the Word. My very first day in Vietnam, I was reading in Mark chapter 4 about, you know, that the uh, mustard seed is the least of all seeds, but when it's sown in the earth, it becomes this huge tree. And the birds, the fowls of the air come and lodge in the branches there. I said, God, that's what I want. I want this worldwide ministry. And God told me that your root is only that deep. You can't afford it. He says, you just forget about all of the fruit and you just deal with the root. And that became a direction for me all through Vietnam. Andrew survived Vietnam through the Word. Upon returning home, Andrew married his childhood friend, Jamie. For 20 years, Andrew ministered, letting his roots grow deep. But things were not easy. Andrew's commitment to some wrong beliefs caused the couple to go through poverty and frustration. During this time, God spoke to Andrew to start a Bible college, which he did, despite his reservations. I didn't want a Bible college, but I was over in England, 1992. And I mean, just all of a sudden, I saw it. God showed me the person that he wanted to run it. He showed me the very first instructor I ever went and got. Andrew was experiencing some success, but everything he was doing was still not enough to reach the world. Andrew was thinking too small, limiting God to only radio, when God had something else in mind. I was really frustrated because I had this vision of reaching the world. And at the pace I was going, it just wasn't happening. Overall, over 20 years, we did improve. It was just a constant frustration. And one of the keys was in 1998, I was praying about this. And once again, I was saying, God, how do I increase? How do I reach people? And I sat down with a calendar and I got to thinking, if it took me 20 years to reach 120 radio stations, for me to reach 6,000 radio stations, it just dawned on my lightning fast mind that I wouldn't get there in my lifetime. And I started praying and saying, God, what is going on? I had a dream and I woke up, I think it was three o'clock or 3.30 in the morning. And I mean, I just, it was like somebody shouted out, I heard your time has come. And I sat straight up in bed and it woke me up and I went into my study and I began to start saying, God, what does this mean? And as I prayed about it, he told me, he says, when you start on television, that's gonna be the beginning of your ministry. And if you had died before I went on television, that even though, you know, I saw people's lives touched and good things happen, he says, you would have missed my perfect will for your life. And that's when the Lord spoke to me and he says, I want you to go on television now. Welcome to the Gospel Truth Broadcast. And today you are going to hear one of the most amazing testimonies that I believe you've ever heard. So stay tuned and prepare to be blessed. Andrew had discovered God's will for his life and was reaching more people than ever before. The increase in the TV audience brought in even more students to the Bible College. And before long, it was more than the ministry could handle. Andrew realized he was still thinking too small. I was talking to a fellow minister about 12 o'clock midnight on January the 31st, and the Lord just spoke to me, Psalm 78, 41, that in your heart you've turned back and you've limited the Holy One of Israel. And he showed me how I was limiting him by my small thinking. And the very next day, I got up in front of a group of ministers, my peers, and told them, I started saying, I am going to have a worldwide ministry that's going to reach people all over this world. And as I was saying it, I was wondering about, are they going to think you're arrogant? Are they going to think you're bragging or something? But I just knew that I had to start uh, speaking forth my vision and quit limiting God. As the Lord showed me I'd been limiting Him, I just started dreaming big. And we went from 14,700 square feet to 110,000 square feet. At that same time, the Lord told me to do it debt free. It was either we were gonna move to a whole new level and God was gonna supply a miracle or I was gonna totally kill the ministry. 
And within 14 months, we had that $3.2 million and we were in this building. When Andrew took the limits off, the ministry went to the next level. TV viewership increased and Andrew realized Karis would need more than just a building, but an entire campus. Andrew had a choice to make. He could fully trust God with a dream he was given at 18 years old. Or he could keep limiting God and it would never come to pass. I'm going to do this with all of the ability that I have, but I've made a decision not to go in debt. Well, here we are at our new property in the sanctuary, and I am thrilled to announce to you that we are actually working on the site. Well, today is December the 26, 2013, and this is our very last update. We actually got in here debt-free, and we met our goal, which is a praise the Lord. You gotta understand, this building, look at it, was stuck in the warehouse of faith, waiting for somebody to pull it out. This was not seen at one time. But you couldn't tell Andrew Womack that. When Andrew committed to taking the limits off, the dream God gave him to have a worldwide ministry came to pass. Andrew's roots have gone deep, so now others can receive the fruit. The ministry has expanded to over 15 international locations with over 70 campus locations. Andrew's books have been translated into over 40 languages, and the Gospel Truth TV program now has a reach of 4.4 billion people. Andrew has discovered his destiny, and now others are discovering theirs through Karis Bible College. What Andrew was once reluctant to start is now producing indescribable fruit. The dream God gave Andrew to reach the world was bigger than he could even imagine. Through discipleship at Karis, an army is being raised up that will continue reaching the world indefinitely with the gospel, as far and as deep as possible. But as Karis Bible College has gotten started and started gaining traction, really the whole focus of my ministry has changed to where now I, I have more joy in seeing people I've ministered to go out and minister than me doing it. Karis is raising up leaders who are able to take what Andrew is giving to the entire world. I said, Lord, now that I know what you have done for us, send us whatever you want to. We want to do things for you. I felt boom inside me, go. We had this idea. We were gonna go preaching in the remote villages where the name of Christ has never been heard. We didn't know how it was gonna work out, we just knew we were going. We knew that we were called. When we first started there in 1999, no one knew the name of Andrew. And now Andrew's the most popular, well-known minister in all of Russia. And what's so amazing is back in 1980, I remember standing there listening to him say this and thinking, you know, this will be a miracle and sitting here today and I'll tell you, this has been a miracle. All of this is a result of one 12-year-old boy asking God what his will for his life was and reaching it when he took the limits off. If God can accomplish all this from a single seed, imagine what the future holds.